but you can see this now. Maybe we should do pi divided by 2. Will it do that? Let's find out. Okay, so that... And then if the x-axis, if we just make the distance 1 here. Okay, that's the reverse, right? Like the, the regular sine curve, the pi, you know, you, you scale the horizontal axis with pi values. When you're looking at arc sine, you scale the vertical axis with pi values. Like all the numbers are still there. There's nothing different about these numbers here. It's just where you put the grid lines and where you put the values, right? It's the same values. It's just setting up to scale this. You know, if you were looking at the original sine curve here, that's pi over 2, and you'd scale it the other way around, right? Like you'd make this one into pi over 2. To look at the original graph here, that's pi over 2, and then make this one into 1. Right? If you're looking at this, if you're looking at the original sine curve here, this uh, arc sine curve, again, it's it's part of x equals sine y here. Like if I draw that again, right? It's just that chunk of it so that it's a function. The blue thing is a function. The red curve is not a function because there's more than one. It's not a function y as a function of x. All right? We okay with what that looks like? If we want to find the <laughs> derivative of it, we're going to find it algebraically. You can think about what it is um, in terms of the relationship between the derivative of a curve and the derivative of its inverse they're reciprocals of each other at points that are reversed, right? If you know that the, if you know the slope of the thing at uh, pi zero of the original thing is negative one, what's the slope of this up here at zero pi? I guess I could draw it in better, but now I can't show this here. But up here, what is the slope up here? Okay, if the slope down here on this black point right there, if that is um, negative 1, what's this? Negative one. negative 1. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1, right? If you pick another point here, though, here this is going to be, this. the black curve is going to have a slope of 0. This has a slope of, well, it's undefined, right, because it's a vertical tangent. If you pick anywhere in between here, presumably somewhere in between, it has a slope of negative, uh, negative a half or something like that. So then this is going to be negative 2 up here. Okay? We could draw the, we could draw the slope of the tangent over, over here um, on this curve right there. Maybe, maybe not. It's always good when you're recording things and it doesn't work. Point. <coughs> Select pointer line, then the, wonderful. Oh, whatever. Figure that out later. Um, but that same relationship as that holds before, right? As soon as you make this positive something on this side, this would have a positive slope here. This is going to have a positive slope. It's not the negative reciprocal. It's just the reciprocal. Okay, we're going to find that algebraically, that uh, that slope now. Okay, so I don't know if I'm giving you enough space here, but we have this space to, to work with. Um, you can start by doing what it says there, which is finding it implicitly. If we want to find this, you know, if we write it, if we write y equals arc sine of x, we don't know what that is yet, but that's what we want, right? We want, we want, uh, what is y prime? That's what we want. The way we can do this is write it the way we just had it. Even though, even though arc sine and this are different, right? Arc sine is just the blue curve in there. X equals sine of y is the entire red curve, but the slope's the same for it, right? We can we can look at the the we can look at this equation, figure out what its derivative is, because then just because this is restricted, it's the same slope, right? The slope everywhere in the blue curve is the same as the red curve. So we're going to look at instead x equals sine of y, and again, I don't think I left enough space here, but Maybe we'll put this over here. You can always write smaller. I can't. I could. X equals sine y. This you can find the, the derivative of because you know the things you need here are you need the chain rule. You need to know how to do implicit differentiation. And you need the derivative. You need to know the derivative of sine here. So 
So if we do the derivative of both sides with respect to x, what do we get here? Yeah, the, the left side you get 1. What about this? Derivative with respect to x of sine y. Where we have to do it in two pieces. you got to do derivative with respect to y, right? d, d, y, and you don't have to write this, but I'm just, derivative of that with respect to y, and then times d, y, dx, right? So what is that? We got 1 equals, like this part you're probably doing in your head, it doesn't matter, you don't have to write that, but that's where it's coming from, right? If you're doing the derivative with respect to x of something that has a y in it, you can't just write that that's, you can't just write that that's cos y, it's cos y times, cos y times y prime or dy dx, whichever you're calling it. So then that one's a pretty easy one to solve for this. 1 over cos y. <clears throat> the only thing is here, if we're looking at this as a, as a function, if, we wanna, if we're looking at this as y as a function of x, it's better if we can give the derivative in terms of x. This is in terms of y. Now, before, when we did implicit differentiation, if I can just flip back there for a second, when we looked at implicit differentiation, the things that we looked at had x's and y's in them. They weren't written as functions, and we couldn't even write them as functions if we wanted to. So when we got down to having a derivative here, it had x's and y's in it, and we just left it like that. <coughs> Since you can write this one as a function, y equals arc sine of x, It'd be nice if we could change this around so that it was so the derivative was in terms of x, not y. So we're going to do some uh, algebra now to, to to finish this. And it's grade 12 stuff, so if you are taking the course concurrently, maybe it uh, doesn't mean a whole lot to you, but you learn a trig identity that relates cos and sine to each other. Because the only way we could turn this back into x is if we use this fact here, our original fact that x was the same as sine y. We don't have sine y, we have cos y, but we know a way that cos and sine are related. There was this identity that uh, I will put down here. 12 identity of, well, it's not just, <laughs> not just for principles of math 12, it's probably thousands of years or something uh, old. Uh, sine and cos, sine squared x plus cos squared x, or y for that matter. Like in this case, we got a y, so I should probably put y in there. Sine squared of anything plus cos squared of anything equals what? 1. So you could rearrange this a bit and make it, uh, we want cos y, so we could make this cos squared y equals 1 minus sine squared y. And you could say that cos y is equal to square root, 1 minus sine squared y. I know really you could say plus or minus, but for this, for this, if you look at the curve, it's always, the, the arc sine curve is always a positive slope, so I'm not going to put this negative in here. Okay, if you look at that, if you look at the chunk of the curve we're looking at, we go back to this. This slope is always positive, so I'm not going to put the I'm not going to put the negative in there. Okay, I realize that when you take the square root of both sides of something, usually you put plus minus, but I'm just going to leave it like that. The reason that helps now is because I can take this and replace this cos y with that. Okay, so this is just this is grade 12 stuff, you know, rearranging a trig identity. But I can take this now. Maybe we'll do it down below here. Um, instead, I can make this 1 over what? Yeah, that's square root, right? Square root 1 minus sine squared. All that is is doing a substitution. Cos y is equal to this whole thing here. Okay. What do you do from there? That still doesn't help, does it? And maybe you don't see why that helps. The reason that it helps is because... The only way I have, whoops, the only way I have x and y related was through this. That's how they're related. I know that x is the same as sine y, but now I changed it around so I have sine y in it instead of cos y. So what can I change it to? 
Ten minutes, thank you. We want the grand finale here, don't we? <laughs> and you'll have to tune into the next exciting part of Calculus 12. <laughs> I thought we were I thought we were going to get away with not getting sidetracked here. Okay, well. <laughs>